the Ferrari LaFerrari, one of the most expensive hypercars in the world. Gordon Ramsay owns one, and it's so loud that you can't even hear him swearing. It looks great, but is it aerodynamic? Let's find out. Some features to watch out for are the front setup, including the splitter, then the front wheel arches, which are a work of art, but as we'll see, unlike most exaggerated front arches, these are very aerodynamic too. Also, keep an eye on how the rear taper of the roof guides the flow and how the air travels around the rear wheel arches as well. So, looking at this plane, we see the front smoothly dividing the flow, and you might think that the front splitter plate is too short, but because the LaFerrari is so close to the ground, it doesn't need to have such a big one, and this is enough. The flow travels over the hood very nicely, and the front windshield is angled enough that there is little flow deceleration and no flow separation whatsoever. Even the roof has been kept relatively flat to prevent the flow from speeding up too much and creating unwanted lift. The rear feeds clean flow to the rear lip, which despite being tiny, picks the flow up a lot, which helps the LaFerrari produce good downforce here. The diffuser is also doing a great job. It keeps the flow attached and creates even more downforce, which helps keep the LaFerrari from flying off the road at high speeds. Let's now see how the air flows around the sides of the car. Looking from the top, the air slightly bends outwards at the front of the car, but because the front edges are sharp and angled by about the same amount, the air travels around the front without any flow separation. And impressively, the front wheels don't create much of a wake at all. And that is incredibly hard to do. The way the LaFerrari does it is by making the wheels very large, take up a lot of the wheelhouse volume, and then having ducts through the wheelhouses to channel the excess air out through the massive side ducts without disturbing the outside flow. The rear wheels use a similar trick to reduce the wakes they produce too. Overall, the rear wake is very small, with the bulk of it dying out only one quarter length downstream, and the rest of it isn't going past about half a car length downstream, which is almost unheard of for a supercar. Looking at this plane traveling down the car, we see something truly remarkable. Behind the front wheel, the only vortex present is the jetting vortex. This vortex comes from the tire contacting the road, and can't really be helped. But all the other vortices you might see, like from the Countach, don't exist here. Even the side mirrors have minimal wakes, dying out only a few mirror car lengths downstream. The roof is incredible because first of all, there is no flow separation anywhere. Then on top of that, there are no vortices from the A pillars or the C pillars, and the rear taper of the roof helps the flow from over the roof merge with the flow from around the windows before hitting the rear of the car. This orbit shows the vortices being created and for most of the car, none are created. The vast majority are from the rear, and the only other major contributors are from the wheels. It is also interesting that even though this car produces downforce, no large vortices are created over the car, which is partly because of the rear diffuser's guide vanes, which stop the flow from bowing out, and partly because of how well the underbody is compartmentalizing the flow from the rest of the flow over the car. But there's more to it than that, because looking at these streamlines, we first see that the flow travels on the inside of the front wheel arches, and then even the side mirror helps guide the flow back around the car to meet up with the flow from over the roof. Then the rear wheel arches help kick the flow out a little over the rear lip, which given how it is designed, increases the surface area and the downforce produced. What's more, the front wheel arches help funnel some of the flow down around the sides of the car too. Looking at the isosurfaces of the drag being produced, it isn't surprising that most of the car is not producing any. Even the hugely exaggerated front and rear wheel arches are performing perfectly, and only the wheels inside them are producing drag. Even the drag in the wake is mostly coming from the mid region. The drag coefficient is just 0.33, which is insane for a hypercar. That's like finding the Red Hot Chili Peppers only drinking Diet Coke and baking cookies. Peace out, amigos.